Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And good evening and welcome to the show. How'd you like the titles? <laughs> we can't afford any of our own, so we borrow some. <laughs> Jesus, they're getting mean. Look at that, half class. <laughs> Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, which was fine until he invented the second one. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I, was, when I was a child in the olden days, at home in Ireland, our phone was something that you, you looked at. You never touched it. It was taboo, off limits, only to be used in uh, very serious matters or matters of emergency, and then only by adults. This, this, this telephone used to sit in our hallway like a black god. And we always talk in kind of servile, reverential tones. As a, as a three-year-old, I used to tiptoe past the bloody telephone. <laughs> if it rang, I'd wet myself. It was a thing of awe. I mean, it was an extraordinary thing to tell them. And when the phone rang in our house, we would all, as a unit, as a family unit, we'd all gather around it. <laughs> and my father would pick up the phone. I mean, some of the greatest events in the world I discovered via the telephone. I'm three years of age. My father picks up the phone there. We're all standing there, and he says, Oh, dear. Puts the phone down and turns to us all and says, Adolf Hitler has invaded Poland. And they all went, Oh, I'm three. I go, Oh. <laughs> Another time, Aunt Alice is dead. And they all went, oh, I'm an, oh. So the funeral's Tuesday, there'll be no school. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> and it was a sneak as well. It, was, it knew everything, the telephone. We gathered around it one day. My father spoke into the telephone. It rang, he spoke into it. He put the phone down. He looked at me and he said, what were you doing in Delaney's orchard? <laughs> Bloody telephone. Sleep on me. <laughs> and then, over the years, as I grew, when I was about seven, I, was, I began to deal with it in a better way. I was, I was aware it wasn't such an extraordinary item anymore. I got a bit casual with it, but it's still wary of it. A little bit daring. We'd pick it up occasionally and listen to the dialing tone. <laughs> That's how far our daring went. The dialing tone. We'd all be sitting around going, I can hear the dialing tone. Look. We'd invite friends who were always sitting around listening to the dialing tone. <laughs> We'd be in school. What did you do yesterday? I listened to the dialing tone. Did, did you, Mike Christ? Can I come to your house and listen to your dialing tone? Yeah. I'll give you an apple. Yeah, fine. <laughs> then you get a bit more daring. A little bit more daring. You actually make a phone call. You don't speak. You just make a phone call. You ring up and somebody says, hello, hello, and you're frozen. <laughs> They put the phone down and you piss yourself and laugh. <laughs> they said hello. <laughs> and then you, you, you get on. There's a point. All oh, children, you go through that kind of rude stage on telephone. You phone somebody up. Just a, you pick out a phone number. Or the phone number. And I pick it up. And they'd answer the phone. I say, Willie. <laughs> Willie who? And I go, my Willie. ha. <laughs> Say things. I, don't, I don't think that's very funny, young man. Cow's bum. <laughs> I think you're being a very silly young boy. Donkey's dick. <laughs> so, it's a story. How, how dare you? I mean, there was a point where we, when I was about 12, we'd reach the final stage of grot. When you're about 12, we'd all be around the phone. We'd have the receiver. Anybody got a fart building up? <laughs> I got one coming, and then we phone the priest or the police station. <laughs> Let them have it. <laughs> and it was that stage where you go through, where you, you begin to, to pretend that you're the uh, engineers from the uh, telephone company. And we'd ring them up and say, uh, hello, can I speak to Mr. Wall? Mr. Wall? And Mr. Wall doesn't live here. Oh, uh, what about Mrs. Wall? No, she doesn't live here. You have no walls in the house? No. <laughs> How do you keep your ceiling up? <laughs> I mean, 
It's amazing the gullibility of people on phone. I suppose the worst thing we ever did was to convince people on telephones that old words, old words from used conversation, from past conversations, like air bubbles in a water pipe, could clog up the lines. And I go, what? And you say, well, uh, old words, past words, they're, they're locked in the line. Like, like, and the only way you can get rid of those words is to immerse your telephone in water. <laughs> and these dickheads used to do it. <laughs> We had one fellow said, well, I, I don't have a bucket of water here. I got, I got a goldfish bowl. Well, that too. And I said, yes. I said, well, when you've got it and you've taken it out, would you talk back to us to see how the words are? And you hear the phone going into... <laughs> and then about two seconds later... <laughs> but the attitude, the attitude to telephones has changed enormously over the years. Now, now that we, we all have telephones. We're all aware of telephones. We react to telephones. And, we're now so sophisticated, so blasé. It's not a, it's not a rarity for telephones. You, know? you are sitting in your own house and your telephone rings. We have actually got to the point of sophistication. We don't want to talk anymore. The telephone rings in your house and you'll, you'll say things like, my God, is there no privacy? Can I never get away from this thing? God, I thought I'd do it all day at work and all the time and I get home and it's non-stop. Or you'll hear yourself say something like, if that's for me, tell them I'm not here. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that extraordinary? And now we've reached the point that we don't want to talk to people on telephones, so we have a machine. We've developed answering machines. Machines to answer machines. The first thing you do, you come home, you listen to your answering machine. And there'll be a message to say, so-and-so rang, would you please ring back such and such a number? And you do, and you talk to his machine. <laughs> You go out, you come back, there's another message from this bastard, so you phone his machine again. <laughs> this can go on for years. You meet each other in the street and you've got no bloody idea what you were talking about. <laughs> then, there, then there are people who actually have worked out a way of leaving a message on a telephone like they're having a conversation with you. They've timed it perfectly. They've got the gaps timed perfectly. I'll phone somebody up and the phone will be lifted up and they say, who is it? And I say, it's Dave Allen. And then a voice will say, how are you? And I actually think I'm having a conversation with the person. <laughs> and I say, oh, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? And they will say, good, 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 fine, fine, fine. What can I do for you? And I'll say, uh, listen, I've got a couple of tickets for the theatre on Tuesday next, if you like them. And they'll say things like, I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> and I go, I've got a couple of tickets for the theatre on Tuesday. I say, I wonder if you could speak a little bit louder. I can't hear you. I've got a couple of tickets for the theatre on Tuesday night. And they'll say, hang on a second, will you? The radio's a bit loud, I'll just uh, turn it down. And you hear them walk away. Dup, 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 dup. You hear the radio go down, you hear the... Dup, 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 dup. And I'll, uh, sorry, what were you saying? Uh, I was saying, could you speak louder? Uh, I said I got a couple of bloody tickets! What a lovely radar! Dear, die! You dumb shit! <laughs> and then they'll say, there's no need to shout, this is a recording. <laughs> those, those type of bastards, you want to get them and tear their pubic hairs out one by one. Knit them all into a scarf and strangle the bastard. <laughs> there, are no, there are no machines. We talk about sophistication in machines. Sophistication in machines. There are now machines. Not only can you program to receive calls, but you can actually program your telephone to send messages. At certain times of the day, you program. It will activate itself. It will phone certain numbers. It will leave a message, activate itself to record a message, right throughout the day. And you have nothing to do with it. You come home in the evening, and you probably possibly programmed your telephone, say, to make 14 calls through the day. Can you imagine coming home, and he's made 18? <laughs> You're sitting there thinking, who's the little bastard talking to? <laughs> what is he talking about? Is he talking about me? And is he paying for these calls? Who is? <laughs> Have you noticed how perverse telephones are? If you're sitting in your house, alone, simply lonely, feeling unloved or depressed or whatever it is, wanting, desiring some sort of contact with human beings, no, nobody but nobody will phone you. But on the other hand, if you're having a wonderful time, enjoying yourself, to the extreme, like you haven't enjoyed yourself for a year, like you're sitting in a 
a warm bath, a beautiful hot bath, sovereignty, joy, pleasure seeping into every pore of your body. Oh, it's very wonderful. Or you're squeezing a blackhead. Oh, you... <laughs> or you're making love or doing all three at the same time. <laughs> Every bastard in the world wants to talk to you. <laughs> you nearly climax seven times. <laughs> Get back into the bath. Where was I? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. And then there's the, 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 uh... <clears throat> the other side with what I would call wrong numbers. The perversity of wrong numbers is... Uh, is extra Have you ever noticed that... Wrong numbers are never engaged. <laughs> you know what You'll always get through to a wrong number. You'll go home tonight, pick ten random numbers from the phone book, five, they'll all answer, hello? <laughs> now we have, uh, we have domestic telephones which are capable of taking three incoming calls at the same time on the one receiver. And people think that, isn't that wonderful? I'm Irish, I don't know, what the hell is that about? Why, why have three calls coming in? You can only answer or speak to one person at the time. But people seem to, <clears throat> excuse, people seem to love this. It gives them a sense of power. You're talking to somebody on the phone saying, hello, I don't know, it's a nice day today, what are you doing? Right? And then they'll suddenly say, uh, excuse me, hang on a second, will you? Uh, would you just hang on a second? I've just got a, another call coming in. They go, what? I've got another call coming in. Um, I've got one of those machines. Then they start to boast about it. I've got one of those machines that uh, can take three incoming calls at the same time. So do you, do, you, uh, do, you, do you mind if I just put you on hold? They go, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to put you on hold, all right? Just for a few minutes. Hold. I mean, what? I, so, wait, I was here first. <laughs> well, why don't you put those other people on bloody hold? Why, why me? And they go, and you're on hold. And not only are you on hold, not only are you paying for this, but now you're subjected to that digital crap music. <laughs> you sit there, you're paying for the call, and it's going dung dung dung. <laughs> dung 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 dung. I mean, who wrote it? Some dyslexic throwback for Christ's sake? <laughs> you're sitting there, dung 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 dung. You talk about advanced technology. You don't have the telephones with the deaf now. Do you know that? They don't ring. They just light up so the deaf person can see there's somebody on the phone. They pick it up and say, hello. <laughs> Voice. Would you believe me? Voice identification buttons. This is progress. Voice identification. Your telephone is capable, once you command it, to identify a voice and remember that. So if you're talking to somebody you don't like on the telephone, you press the button. And this informs your telephone memory bank that you don't like this person. <laughs> and the next time they phone, your telephone will recognize the voice and cut them off. <laughs> do, you, do you find that uh, public telephones are vandalized? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was a real right-wing reaction there, isn't it? <laughs> Vandal, uh, bring back the birch. Hang the bastards. Uh, telephone. Uh. You know, you want to stop a telephone, public telephone being vandalized? Go in there and vomit and urinate. <laughs> People actually think that telephones don't work because they're vandalized. I think they're vandalized because they don't work. <laughs> they now have on telephones what is called the recall button. Come across that. The advanced technology. If you phone somebody uh, and their number is engaged, and it's engaged probably because it's the right number, <laughs> you don't have to go through that whole laborious, time-consuming exercise of actually putting your finger into the little hole or pressing those buttons. You don't have to waste time. You just program your telephone and your telephone will continue to phone that number until it's unengaged, which sounds wonderful. But what if you go away for a holiday <laughs> and forget to unprog your telephone and you come back and your best friend's in a lunatic asylum? Because 
every 12 seconds the phone is going ring, ring, and he's picking up and saying, hello, hello, <laughs> hello, the Christ say something. I don't, I, I, I had a telephone engineer at the house, and he's showing me the latest telephone. It has, believe it or not, I mean, I don't work for the CIA or MI5 or anybody like that, a secrecy button on the telephone, secrecy button. It's actually clearly marked, secrecy button. <laughs> And I said, I said, what, what, what's the secrecy button? And he said, well, you know, when you're on a telephone, there's always a point in the conversation when you're talking to somebody that you don't want them to hear what you're saying. <laughs> I said, there is? He said, yes, there is. It's not that you don't want to, it's just that you, you actually think they're an asshole. <laughs> there's always a point when you're talking to somebody and you think, what an asshole. <laughs> And what you normally do is you cover the mouthpiece and mime. <laughs> you don't have to do that now. All you have to do is press the button. And you can say as loud as you like, He's an arsehole! <laughs> and he won't hear you. And I say, well, hang on a second. If I'm talking to somebody and suddenly there's silence, I know he's pressed the button. <laughs> I know he's calling me an arsehole. And when he comes back, he'll say, now what was I saying? I'm saying, you were saying, now that's an arsehole. I put the phone down. <laughs> now, in, a, in our society, at one time, phones were rare. Now they're commonplace. They're everywhere. Portable phones are now the in thing. I sit on a, I wander around London. I sit on a tube. I sit on a bus. Trains, wherever I am. I see people sitting there, and they'll open a briefcase. Or a handbag, or the satchel, or the pocket, out the single come. They go, <laughs> You see them now on the streets, walking up and down the streets in London, talking on the telephone. And it's, it's always that kind of. Yeah, yeah, well, of course, yes. Well, I, I personally would, uh, I'd uh, keep it to my chest if I were you. I wouldn't uh, let them know, because I think it might actually have tomorrow. <laughs> and you see these, and I'm thinking, I'm dying, I'm waiting. Oh, please, God. I go to church, I light candles. Please, God, let one of those bastards walk into a lamppost. <laughs> I'd love to see them walking around. Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> I'll phone you back. Hello, is that the ambulance service? Yeah, I broke my nose. Yes. <laughs> portable phone. Now, now, now we have portable. Phone. Now we have car phones. Car phone. Two, two of the most stress-making machines in the world have combined together: the telephone and the car. They account for more dead people in the world than any other two objects. Telephones and cars. Do you, do you know the stress you go through on the telephone? Has anybody ever cut you off on the telephone? Has anybody ever said, what? Oh, shut up! And put the phone down. <laughs> have, you, have you noticed? You continue to talk for about 10 or 15 seconds after that. You, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you, what are you, what are, how dare you? How, what the, shut up, shut up. It's the same at cars. You watch people in cars. The stress of people in cars, the rage of people in cars. <sighs> See people get into cars and they change. They go from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde, the nicest people in the world. You don't, you don't see pedestrians charging around, do you? you? You've never seen pedestrians walk up a road cutting up other pedestrians, have you? <laughs> you never seen them get up and move up. <laughs> All of them, beep, 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 beep. Now they've got the telephone in the car with them. Driving with one hand. Beep, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to get one of those car telephones. Not because I want it for myself. I just want to be in a traffic jam and lean out to the person next to me and say, excuse me, it's for you. <laughs> and now, we, now I'm telephoned. You know, we have all these useless services on telephones. 
For no reason at all, we have things like dial a joke or dial a poem or dial a prayer or dial a blessing. Dial a dirty phone call. You can actually dial dirty phone calls. <laughs> Years ago, they'd fine you for doing that. Now they're paying you to bloody do it. <laughs> you can sit there on a telephone, pant, fantasize, master yourself, masturbate yourself to your heart's content, all for 28 pence a minute. <laughs> I stumble on that. I always do when I talk about masturbation. <laughs> Panting, fantasizing, and masturbating. I suppose when you're finished, you could phone and dial a confession. <laughs> Catholics are into all the money makers. <laughs> my children. My children have, uh, have grown up in a sense, in a different way with the telephone than I, I did. I've actually, over the years, watched my children, who are not children any longer, younger, young adults. Uh, I've watched the, the hand become an extension of the phone, or the phone become an extension of the hand. It is, it is extraordinary, the, the need to talk on the telephone all the time. I would, when they were, when they were younger, I would take them to school. I would say, for example, my daughter Jane. I would take her to school in the morning. And not only would I take her to school in the morning, but I'd take all her friends to school in the morning as well. Uh, there was Belinda from next door, and then there was Melissa from two doors down, and uh, then there was Alexander from somewhere else down the road. And they, they never stopped talking. I would, just, I would just pick them up and go, hello Belinda, hello Jane, hello Belinda, Jane, hello Alexander, hello Melissa, hello Melissa, hello Melissa, hello Melissa, hello Melissa, and we all get in the car, and for 40 minutes we just drive across London, and they were all like, and the four of them, Verbal diarrhea pouring in torrents out of all that. <laughs> and then I would drop them at school, still talking. I'd leave them there for six hours, knowing they were going to talk to each other for six hours. I'd pick them up, they'd still be talking. Back in the car, across London. <laughs> I'd drop them off. Goodbye, Belinda. Bye, Jane. Bye, Alexander. Bye, Melissa. Bye, Jane. Bye, Melissa. Jane would go into the house, I'd park the car, I'd go into the house, she's on the phone. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Belinda, Belinda lives next fucking door! But <laughs> she'd lay guilt on you. <laughs> Belinda's daddy doesn't complain. <laughs> Belinda's daddy's a dickhead! <laughs> and then my daughter would say to Belinda, my daddy said, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> and the way, it, the, the way it affects our lives. It's, uh... I have a son, my eldest son, my youngest son now, is 21 years of age. Now, I'm not a father anymore to him. I'm a personal answering service. <laughs> I spend my life answering the phone for him. I mean, we'll both be in the same room and the phone will ring. But he won't get up and answer it. I'll get up and answer it. And it's for him. No, I say, it's for you. Why didn't you answer it? He said, I thought it was for you. <laughs> no, in your, in your mind's eye, see, see, see the house I live in. I live in a house, three stories, three floors. The phone is on the ground floor. My son lives in a converted attic at the very top of the house. So I'm sitting there, whatever I'm doing, and the phone will ring. I, it's for Edward. So I go to the bottom of the stairs, and I stand there, and I go, Edward! Edward! Phone! Edward! So I go up to the first landing. Edward! neighbors know Edward is wanted on the phone. <laughs> I go to the second floor. Edward! Get off the phone! You deaf dickhead! <laughs> now, not only do all the neighbors know that Edward's wanted on the phone, the whole neighborhood, everybody in my whole area knows Edward is wanted on the, on the telephone. Except Edward, he doesn't know. <laughs> I go up to the top of the house, the door is locked, I kick it. 
I'm a ranting, demented beetroot now. <laughs> Frothing on my... Ah, 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 ah. I open the door. He's lying on his bed. He bloody earphones on. His eyes closed. <laughs> Jigging away to the music. <laughs> I stand over the bed. Edward! 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 Nothing. I grab him by the leg. <laughs> by now, I'm totally out of breath. He says, what? <laughs> Hello, telephone. And he goes, thanks, Dad. And pisses off downstairs. <laughs> oh, what, what is it with, with young men, especially? I'm, I'm, up to 18 years of age. For most of, they learn to speak English perfectly. They can speak perfect English. Hello, how are you? Good afternoon. I had a very nice day today. Then when they, when they get to be 18, their brains become hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> All that ability to speak the language goes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they become Neanderthal men. <laughs> <laughs> They even, they, they begin. <laughs> I mean, I watched them walk down the road. <laughs> I sit at home. Edward, friends are always ringing. I pick up the phone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what, what is this, a yodeling competition? <laughs> Apart from proving to me the ability that you have of saying, hello, what do you want? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. What, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> are, are you saying? <laughs> Fine, I know you're saying it, but what does <laughs> mean? <laughs> it means. <laughs> look, could you look? I, 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 I'm sorry about this. I, you know, I just, just. Bear with me, be patient, please. Could you just do it a little bit more slowly so I can try and comprehend, right? In, in, in. <laughs> in, in, in. I hear myself going. In, in, in. In, in, in. And I think, what in the name of Christ is he talking about? And then I think, wait, wait a second. In, in. It's Ed. Maybe. My son's name is Edward. Maybe they call him Ed. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe he's saying, is Ed in? And I just try it. I say, did, did you say, is Ed in? <laughs> no, you didn't say, is Ed in, dickhead. You said, <laughs> No, he's not. <laughs> and it's true, I think, they, they have this need to repeat everything you say. He's not in. He's not in. <laughs> no, he's not in. No, no. He's out. No. Yes, he's out. If he's not in, he's out. I know it's very difficult to understand that, but when you're out, it means you're not in. Or whether you're in, you're not out. It doesn't make any difference. All right? He's not here. <coughs> no, he's not here! <laughs> he's gone out. When, when did he go out? What? <laughs> when did he go out? I don't know when he went out. When did he come in May? <laughs> I don't know when he's coming out. When did he go out? I don't know where he went. I don't know where he went, when he went, when he's coming back. I'm his father. I'm a geriatric old fart who knows nothing. <laughs> and then they were saying to me, when, when are you coming back? I said, what? 
And when he comes back, and I said, when he comes back, yeah, when he comes back, when you say the nyo nyo ring. <laughs> what? Nyo nyo ring. Nyo nyo? Nyo nyo? Nyo You want me to say to my son, when he comes home, nyo nyo ring. All right, I'll do that. Thank you. It's been nice talking to you. <laughs> well, when my son comes home, I say to him, I hear him, I say, Hey, Edward. <laughs> And he knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> no, not only that, but I'll, I'll make up a whole conversation. And I'll say, he said, <laughs> And my son will say, what time? <laughs> Now, what's actually happening? There's an engineer working for Bell Telephones who's probably worked out, has solved the answer to all these domestic problems. As you know that telephones now are not confined to making the one sound. Like ring, 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 ring. Telephones today can make a variety of sounds. They can go... <laughs> make all sorts of sounds. And he's probably worked out the best answer to this is for each and every one of uh, the individual members of the family to have their own sound. And you'd activate the sound by having the same number, the same one collective home number, and give an added digit to every, fam every member of the family. For example, uh, my number would be my number plus one. Because I pay for the bastard, so I might as well have it. <laughs> And that, that one would activate my, my tone, my sound, which would tell me this is for me. And my sound would be, say, And I would know, and everybody else would know, when the phone went, That's for daddy. That's for me. That's mine. Mine. Me. Mine alone. Hello, hello, whoever you are. <laughs> My son's code would be the number plus two. And that would activate a totally different sound. Zip, 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 zip. <laughs> zip, 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 zip. Zip, zip, zip. So I would know I don't have to. It's for him. But I'd be sitting there in the privacy of my own home all day and the phone would be going zip, 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 zip. <laughs> zip, 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 zip. I'd have to pick it up and say, the bastard's not in! <laughs> I, have a I have two telephones. I have a telephone which rings. Just nice. Ring, 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 ring. I have another one that sounds like an attacking eagle. I don't know why we need that. It does. It's, it's in the kitchen. It sits on the wall. It doesn't actually sit on the wall. It's perched on the wall. <laughs> Well, I'm sitting there in the morning, and mornings are not my best time. I'm sitting there uh, reading the paper, trying to lift a cup of coffee. And suddenly the phone will go, <laughs> bloody coffee everywhere, all the time. <laughs> and I pick it up and I say, hello. Uh, parents, parents here? There were parents in the audience? Do your children use the telephone? Yes. Have they at any time ever, once in all their lives, said to you, Daddy, Mommy, can I pay for that call? <laughs> Little bastards. <laughs> you spend your life with this, and then eventually they grow up and they leave home. They depart. You've got rid of them. Get out. Go away. Into the world they go. The phone will ring. It's them reversing the charges. <laughs> Not to find out how you are, but were there any calls for them? <laughs> All right, well... I think it's uh, about time we started to live happier lives. 
So uh, I will say good night. Thank you. And may your God go with you. Thank <laughs> you.